Hey there, if you stumbled across this video, uh, my name is Dr. Aker. Uh, I've got five or six years experience working with adult otoliths, uh, but I've recently taken the dive into uh, juvenile and larval otolith extraction, which is a whole new world, actually, it turns out. <clears throat> so uh, I decided to make this video as I didn't find anything when I was trying to find some resources. So the first things you're gonna need are this fine tip uh, probe. I, um, I bought this hooked one originally, but I didn't, it, it wasn't very useful, so I kind of bent it out and turned it into this 95 to 120 degree probe. You'll see in the, uh, under the scope I've made a recording, you'll see it there. Uh, and then some fine tip forceps as well. Um, I, I rarely use these, but to get the, the fish out of the, the vials themselves, or um, uh, if, if there's a big piece of uh, flesh that needs to come off of the fish, I'll use them. You also need some uh, microscope slides. I like to use the frosted tip slides. Uh, they're a little easier to write on um, the edge, uh, which reminds me you need a fine tip Sharpie. And then uh, some kind of thermoplastic cement. The brand that I've been using for the last five or six years is this uh, SPI Supplies. Uh, ideally, you'll have some kind of like dissecting scope, a high-powered scope um, uh, would be ideal, but uh, for, for at least the extraction, you don't need a whole lot of power. Um, but you do need some kind of external light source. Um, if you don't have it built in, it's something that's uh, reflected. These like crane-necked um, external light sources tend to work pretty well, <clears throat> and I've had quite a bit of luck with them as well. Um, you also need um, a hot plate. The hot plate uh, is going to be used in um, uh, once the odor is extracted. You're going to place a slide on the hot plate, put a little bit of the thermoplastic cement, um, and then place the otolith on the thermoplastic cement on the slide. And uh, I'll show an example of this. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do here is scrape away a bit of the skin off of the supraoccipital crest uh, before I make a small puncture just behind uh, that series of bones. And then kind of gently push away um, that bone from the brain. Uh, I like to get the majority of it out of the way um, to give myself a little bit more room to kind of push material around um, to, to kind of open up that cavity to see the otolith a little bit better. Once most of the um, bone is removed, you can see here that the, the brain is fully exposed at this point. Um, I like to roll the fish onto its side a little bit so that whenever uh, I do remove most of the brain, the, the sac that those otoliths are sitting inside of is a little bit easier to view. <clears throat> if, if you put it on the side um, and, and you move this material out of the way, the, the light source will generally reflect off that otolith just a little bit different um, and you can kind of see the otolith sitting inside there and it makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit more obvious. So I changed the, the focus here uh, because now I, I know where the otolith is. I can see right where the, those, the, that black pigment is, uh, where, where I've currently focused. That's actually where the otoliths are sitting at the moment. Um, so you can kind of ignore the other stuff. But we're, we're on the left side of the fish right now. Um, I've, I had to switch over to another fish, and that's hence the kind of like abrupt change here. But um, still, we're on the left side of the fish, and uh, right where the melanophores—excuse me—the uh, yeah, the melanophores are. Uh, you can actually see the sac at this very moment, right, right now. And I'll drop out this uh, video in the bottom left-hand corner so that you can see everything a little bit better. Just wanted you to give give you a side view so that you you could see the the process from un outside the microscope. Okay, so, so now that I've broken through the sac where the otoliths are, 
uh, I'm going to reshift focus again and uh, it should become relatively obvious. So you can see it right now. If you look where um, the probe is currently touching, you'll notice that the otolith has actually popped out right here. And uh, I'll point to it here at the, with the probe several times. All right, so the next step is to get it out of the head, which can be tricky. Um, I did a relatively decent job on, on this occasion, just came right out. But once you have it stuck to the side of a, you know, your forceps or your probe or whatever it is, whatever tool you end up choosing, um, you're going to grab a slide, you're going to put it on the hot plate, and then you're going to put a little bit of the thermoplastic cement, as we talked about earlier, the slide off of the hot plate, and place the otolith on top of the thermoplastic cement. And you see an image now that's popped up in the bottom left hand corner here. <clears throat> that's the otolith mounted on the slide. And that's the orientation uh, that it should be in as well. So you want the, the sulcus or the core um, on the, the back side of the slide, exposing the front end of the otolith. So that this is the side that you're going to end up polishing. And there are several options for polishing. Um, a lot of people will create a slurry with a fine grit silicone carbide. Um, put that on to a, a, a high grit polishing pad, create a slurry with that silicone carbide and, and, and polish from there very slowly. Um, but that's for a different video. Um, in this particular video, I showed you how to extract and mount otoliths um, for the next step, which would be the polishing. So thanks for taking the time to watch and um, best of luck in your endeavors uh, extracting otoliths from small fish.